to get this rooted back in the body of Christ. Really rooted in the body of Christ. So go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. And then we're going to throw the PowerPoint back up because we want to go ahead and get these uh, finished. And then hopefully tonight we'll be able to dive into a little bit of the ministry of Jesus so that you can see these, some of them functioning in, in, in manifestation, seeing the actual manifestations thereof. And, um, and so 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, it says, well, I guess I need to get there. I sent you there and didn't go myself. 1 Corinthians 12, it says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. And, and once again, you have to realize Paul is writing these letters to these different churches. So he is writing an actual letter to the church, to the saints at Corinth. And he says, Concerning spiritual gifts, endowments, of the Spirit, I do not want you unlearned about it. And so he was saying, I want to give you some knowledge about it. Because they had been functioning, but they didn't have proper knowledge, so they were getting into some strife and divisions. That's why right after this verse, or this chapter, excuse me, he goes into the chapter about love. Now, what is that about? It was because they were getting in competition. They were getting in jealousy. They were trying to out-prophesy one another, outdo one another. He begins to tell them in that whole chapter that, no, God sets people in the body as he wills. But, but I just want to say in this day and age, this would be a good problem to have. It would really be a good problem to have so much going on in the body of Christ that we have to fix it all. So, you know, there's a whole lot going on about the prophetic right now. At least we got something to fix. I'd rather, I'd rather have to fix it and give order to it than to not have it functioning or operating at all. And so this is the problem with the Corinthian church. It wasn't the gifts. It was the order and the motive that he is addressing. And so he says that God, drop down, drop down here to verse number seven, because it says the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. And there goes their motive right there. He's addressing, he's telling them that your motive is that yeah, it, it's for the profit of everybody. It's not for you. It's not about you. It's for the people. And so he's addressing their motives and then he goes on down and talks to them by one, for one it is given, the word of wisdom. And then he goes on the word of knowledge, another faith, another gifts of healings, another working of miracles, another prophecy, another discerning of spirits, another different kinds of tongues, another interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit works all these things. Who works all these things? The Spirit works all of these things. So now this is crucial. Don't want to harp here long because I really want to get into more of the manifestations of these gifts. But no man can work these. No person can work them. This is where we get in trouble is when we start trying to to work these without the Spirit. They are His manifestations. So anybody that tells you, I have the gift of, they don't. They might be used. <laughs> but nobody has the gift of anything. These are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So if they're the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that tells you nobody can have them. They're not the gifts of any man. And he doesn't give them to him as if to say, I'm giving you that gift from me. People need to really understand that so you make sure you, you cannot try to work these manifestations. How are you going to make the Holy Spirit manifest? 
if they are manifestations of the Spirit, then they can't manifest until the Spirit manifests. And so now, does he call people into offices? Yes. Apostles, probably. But even in those, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, this is why we're having so much trouble in the body of Christ. And this is why Paul is correcting the Corinthian church. Because even in Ephesians 4, it says he gave gifts unto men. Who gave the gifts? The Holy Spirit gave them. These are functions. So nobody gets to walk around and say, I am this. I am that. When Paul would say he was an apostle, he would write and say, Paul, the apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. You understand? The sent one is what he was saying of the Lord. He wasn't saying, I'm the apostle. I'm the, uh, you know, I'm the man. <laughs> he was saying, no, I was called to this. I was separated unto this. These are functions that I've been sent on the behalf of the kingdom to operate in, and it takes the Holy Spirit to do them all. Jesus even said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach. He says, I can't even preach without the Spirit of God flowing and functioning through me. And we got to get back to letting the Holy Spirit get to glory. Yeah, I said a thing. We got to get back to allowing the Holy Spirit to get the glory so that people seek the Spirit and not men. He seeks the Spirit, not men. Now, so now what we want to do is give the Holy Spirit a place and room to manifest these things so that people can profit. And so these are the manifestations of the Spirit. Jesus is going to show you that perfectly when we get there, if we get there tonight. So now, we broke these manifestations of the Spirit up into three parts, and I got that from, from Kenneth Hagin. He just explained it perfectly, that three of these gifts say something, three of these manifestations do something, and three of these manifestations reveal something. So if you'll put them back up on the screen for me, and let's start with the one that we talked about Sunday. I'm going to run through it. And for those of you that are watching me, go back and listen to Sunday's message. You need it because you're going to be catching a moving train. I'm going to jump to this second page real fast. So I explained this in some detail. And the Holy Spirit really helped me make that so practical because these manifestations are happening more than we realize. We're just not really being aware of it. Or sometimes you think it's your mind, or you think it's you. But a lot of times it is the Holy Spirit, and that's why you dismiss it. You won't dismiss it if you think it's the Holy Spirit. You dismiss it when you think it's you, or it's just me, or, or, you know. But when you know this is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit, you'll be more, you'll have more faith to act on it. You'll have more faith to receive it. So a lot of this is us not receiving when he's manifesting, because when he manifests, he does not always do so in a spectacular way. Matter of fact, thank you, Holy Spirit. Hmm. Okay. The, the Bible says that to one, he gives a word of wisdom, word of knowledge. Just think about those two. The word there is probably logos or rhema in the Greek. Okay, what logos is, is a thought or intent of God made known by a spoken word. That's, that's what this is. You do realize, even though you're reading it, they were not reading it when they wrote it. They heard it. I mean, David couldn't say, turn the songs. <laughs> you understand? They heard him say it. For all Scripture is given by inspiration, that's prophecy, of the Holy Ghost. And men wrote what they heard him say. What you're reading right now is a letter that Paul was sitting in prison. 
that he's writing to the Corinthian church as he feels inspired to tell them. So now, just think about that. If God gives you a word of wisdom, a logos of wisdom, or a spoken word of wisdom, logos or rhema, rhema whenever you hear God speaks, he's revealing a, a, a word to you or an intention or a revelation or a thought. Now, that tells you right there that some of these manifestations of the Spirit are going to register through your thinking. Because you don't hear him audibly. So where do you hear him? You hear him within you, in your spirit. Everything that registers within you comes through your, it, it, it comes within you, but it registers in your soul. Where your soul doesn't function by volume levels. So it's not audible. Oh, I'm teaching good tonight. Because I don't want you to miss him. Like all of us have missed him a lot of times. So it's going to register as thoughts that are coming to you. I mean, has anybody ever heard him speak out loud? I felt like I had one time in my life, and it literally saved my life. He shouted for me to slow down, and it startled me because it's almost like I heard it. And I hit my brakes to slow down. Two seconds after I hit my brakes, my front left tire blew out on Interstate 30. And I was able to hold it and get on to the side. Now, that's the only time where it, I don't know if it was audible, but it felt audible. But I'm 51. That's the only time I felt like I've ever heard an audible voice of God. No, you hear it. It registers in you. It registers. Now, now, that happens all the time. Every day, to some degree, if you're walking with the Lord at all, that happens. So, the, he's just dropping a word here, dropping a word there, dropping a thought here, dropping a thought there. Dropping, dropping, uh, drop, dropping words, drop, dropping, dropping knowledge, dropping understanding, dropping, dropping revel, dropping. He's always, and it's registering. And a lot of people, I think, don't feel like they flowing because they, I think they're looking for too much to happen. They're looking for something deep. But come on there, when you talk to one another, you don't get deep. I don't go in the room and call for my wife and do it in some, oh, Janet, the, the, <laughs> my Puerto Rican queen. No. You talk to her like you in a relationship. Don't obey. Yeah. She talks to me and be like, oh, Isaac. <laughs> no, she'd be like, babe. <laughs> That's how the Lord and the Holy Spirit speaks to you. That's why Elisha said it was a still, small voice. Aquila calls it a prophetic whisper. It ain't, it, it's, 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 a, it's a conversation. It's, 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 it, and the Holy Spirit is always talking. And I promise you, many people who said that the Lord didn't answer their prayer heard it and dismissed it. Heard it and dismissed it. It ain't that he didn't answer. He said it. The thought ran through there somewhere. You just dismissed it or didn't, didn't follow through on it, didn't obey it, didn't heed to it. No, oh, the Holy Spirit ain't going to ever leave you or forsake you. It's just that most people have so much tension, so much fear, so much panic, so much he, it's just like when you're talking to him, you can't get him to slow down. So you know the Holy Spirit can't get him. And they're just dismissing the manifestation of his voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's why when he manifests, some of these he manifests that causes verbalization, prophecy, 
whether you're in church and you speak out an inspired utterance from God, or whether you have an unction to pray in tongues, um, and this is an unction, this is not an act of your will, this is an unction to do so, you're declaring just like a prophetic word something supernatural, you're just not saying it in a known language. It's still the same thing. It's still the same thing. It's still the same. It carries the same mission. It is to get the word of God out of your mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. <laughs> How many of you know when you said something and you felt like I said that under the unction of the Holy Spirit? <laughs> I mean, I've been praying all day, but that came out of my mouth like a sword or that came out with some energy or that, that, that was different. Yeah. So prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues covered all that. So I want to move on to the next slide. Please go back if you were not here with me Sunday and, and listen to that because I broke all three of those really down. Now, three of those cause verbal, verbalization. The Holy Spirit speaks to you or he speaks through you to somebody. Remember, these gifts manifest to you and they manifest through you for the profit of people. But then he says, I want to manifest to you also. This is how I want to lead you supernaturally. It's through these manifestations of me talking to you. All right? And now the revelation gifts, these three gifts reveal something. When he manifests this time, he's trying to, he's trying to give you understanding. He's trying to give you wisdom. He's trying to give you knowledge. So you've got the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, discerning of spirits. Now, once again, this is a word of wisdom, so it's going to register within you. Either you're going to hear or sense a voice within you, or you're going to, even when thoughts register to you, they register like, like voices come in. Just, you realize that, right? When, when you hear things within you, you don't hear thoughts like thoughts, like, like words, no, you, you hear phrases and sounds and voices, and it's, it's very audible to you. And so, a word of wisdom. That's why when it comes to you, it's almost like, man, I didn't know that. Or it's a revealing. So, the key to knowing when these things are manifesting is by that title, that subtitle, Revelation. They reveal something. They reveal, it's revealed wisdom. It ain't you searching some trying to find the, no, it comes to you by him. He reveals. And revelation is an unfolding or an uncovering. So now, how does that happen to your mind? You know, if, if this is underneath my Bible, physically, for me to take my Bible off of it and expose it, that's revealing this iPad. That's revelation. It was hidden. It was there. It was just covered. So to remove the covering is revealing it. So now that's in the physical. So now take that to a spiritual dimension. Take that to your mind. Take that. It is simply God removing the fog out of your mind about a matter. And you just see it clearly. And it wasn't nothing you did. It's, it's what a lot of people call aha moments, but they're, they're bigger than aha moments. <laughs> We're not going to give it no worldly title. It's revelation. <laughs> it, it, but, but that's what it is. It's, it's a, I see it. I got it. I understand it. Word of wisdom. And this wisdom can be of a future event in your life, a present situation you're dealing with. It is the Holy Spirit revealing to you his wisdom concerning the situation. This is not human wisdom. This is not, these are not, this is not philosophy. This is not being smart. This is not worldly wisdom. This is not being wise in order to budget money. I mean, you can do that just by, hey, two plus two is four. I mean, and if you ain't got for three dollars, you understand that that's worldly stuff you've been taught. You understand? 
But 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 two fish and five loaves, y'all don't hear y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Y'all, hey, come on now, come on, nigga. you got to deal in some wisdom to come up with that. How are we gonna feed these people? Find me two fish and five loaves of bread. Now we on a whole nother level. What you gonna do with that? Revelation, re- 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 revelation gonna show you. I'm going <laughs> God's gonna reveal it. He's gonna have to show you. So He wants us functioning on that level, y'all. Hey! Glory to God. No, it don't make sense. This is revelation. And if we're going to get to a dimension above things that are normal, natural, educational, you know, IQ and and sense and what makes sense. And no, we're going to have to start functioning on a level of wisdom that is hidden. It is hidden from the natural mind. Paul said it's hidden from natural men. Why? Because the Spirit has to reveal it. We ought to be functioning. That means, man, when you go to work, you ought to be solving every problem. Oh, come on, y'all don't hear me. See, see we want to do all this stuff in church, but, but when Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. Hallelujah. You got to be on the scene when something happens and they don't know how to fix it, how to change it, what to do. You got to show them and say, Holy Spirit, show me, show me what to do. This is how you get a raise. This is how you get promoted. This is how, oh, my God. Boy, I'm glad I got the right saints in here tonight. Yeah, this, 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 is, this is how you get there. This is how you figure out situations in your family. This is why when they call you and they're perplexed and they don't know what to do, and you start saying, Lord, t- tell me what to tell them. Show me what to tell them. Tell- the older I get, and the Lord told me to do this. The Holy Spirit really etched this in me. He said, quit thinking you have to have the answer to when people call you. He says, don't say anything till you hear me say something. Listen long enough until you hear me talk, because you know we've been through so much as a pastor, as people in life, you live long enough, sometimes you can just start talking. You know, well, I feel like you ought to do this. But no, when you really want to fix it, you need wisdom from above. When you want the key to unlock the door, yeah, you got to ask God, okay, give it, tell me what to do. And then you got to just wait. You got to wait till he, till, till, he, till he says something. And you'll know it that, oh, I, I think I, I need to say this. You'll know why. It's revelation. It comes to you. You don't think it up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It, co- it invades your mind. <laughs> you don't search for revelation. It searches for you and then shows up and just uncovers the mind of God to you. Woo-wee! See, us preachers, we have a little bit of the advantage. Now, we shouldn't because we study the Bible for a living. And you should, too. You got one. And we live like this because all week long, all we do is, is read scriptures until up. <laughs> I ain't never seen that there before. See, so we got the advantage because we live by revelation. We can't preach. Oh, God. Oh, come on, y'all. And I understand. I understand ministers who can set their agenda weeks in advance. And I get it. I'm not in study things and read commentaries and all of that and minister and be so sequenced and, and lined out weeks ahead. Uh, but I can't roll like that. I, not me. I'm not, not, not nobody else. I'm just saying I can't roll like that. You understand? I can't be robotic with what I got to say because the Bible says, Holy Spirit, it's like the wind. He's like, he, he's like the wind. He blows. He, he moves. And I got to be able to be flexible enough to know when he blew when he blew on something where I just slam all the notes and just close the book and say all right now now talk through me what 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 I see right now you ain't interested in my notes so so what I really want to say to the people revelation revelation you want you want revelation you want revelation 
And these gifts of the Spirit, <laughs> put them back up on the screen for the saints, please. <laughs> I didn't get carried away. Word of wisdom. Uh, no, 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 no. Come back. Come back. There you go. Word of wisdom. Word of wisdom. This is God. Just a word now. Just, just, just a thought. Just a word. Not, not a whole Bible. Just the Logos. Just, just the Logos here. <laughs> and the Logos there of his wisdom. You follow the, the wisdom and the whole situation responds as if God was in the middle of it. Word of knowledge. Wisdom deals more with, with the unknown. Wisdom deals more with, with the future. Wisdom deals more with the mysteries of a thing. A word of knowledge is something that God reveals to you that is a fact. It was just hidden from you. <laughs> but it's already present. It's already manifest. It's, it's knowledge. It, it, and, it, and, it and it ain't just being extra smart. No. No, no. If I walk up to you and say, you know, today at work, such and such sudden happened to you, and the Lord wanted me to let you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, I just told you what was already known to you. It was already known to you. But now the key is, how did I know it? Spirit of God had to have revealed that to me. Oh, boy, <laughs> let me hurry up so we can get over to Jesus. Because when you go back and read Jesus in the light of the manifestations of the Spirit, you see them all working. All of it. And this is how he lived. This is how Peter, James, and John lived. It's by, it's by these manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Word of knowledge. Jesus, a woman at the well, told us, say, you, well, you've been in some situations. <laughs> and she was shocked. She was like, how you know my business? Yeah. You told me everything. Come see this man. This man told me everything. How did he know that? The Holy Spirit. Word of knowledge. Manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Jesus couldn't do it being a son of God. If he could do it like that, he wouldn't have had to be anointed by the Holy Spirit. The, he had these gifts were working in him. He knew their hearts. How did he know that? Discerning the spirits. It's, it's, it's a manifestation of the, the discerning of spirits. It's the discerning of spirits. <laughs> it's the discernment of a spiritual entity, whether it's the Spirit of God, a demonic spirit. It's the discerning of spirits, the hearts, intentions of people. It, it's, it's discerning motives. It's discerning the spiritual operations of a person or an entity at work. Hallelujah. And it's a discernment. You just discern it. It's a sense. You just sense, no matter how they shout it, that ain't God. <laughs> you can't explain it. It's a sense, and it's the sense of the Holy Spirit where you just know, because you got to know these, because when you get into the life, remember, when the woman was following Paul and saying, you got to hear these men, they, they preaching the word of God, and Paul said, I was grieved. She was shouting me down, saying amen and saying how great we were, but I felt, felt something in my spirit wasn't right. And then he turned around and cast the devil out of her. That'll happen in a church service. It'll happen all the time, and you have to watch it. Now, they don't happen much in here no more because we got so good, <laughs> so good at casting it out, the devil don't hardly come up in here no more. But it used to happen all the time. I mean all the time because the devil knew we were learning and, and we were struggling. But, boy, once we start discerning spirits, we tell people, oh, shut up, sit down. No, we really did, for real. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> boy, y'all ought to thank God I've come a mighty long ways. <laughs> I've come a long ways. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, that ain't God. That's not the Spirit of God because they get up and they start shouting, dancing, and saying something. And, I mean, the whole place just feels just shuts down everything. And you're like, wait a minute, that's grieving me. That ain't helping me. 
that ain't helping me. And a lot of times it's, it's, it's just you just discerning what's happening at work, you discerning. You meet people, you discerning. Now, discernment of spirits is not a clash of personality. Sometimes it's just you just don't like somebody. You know, you just, they're not at a fit. They're too loud. They're too aggressive. They're too, you know, and your personality is a little more laid back. And so you ain't discerning no spirit. What you're saying is my personality, I can't deal with people like that. But then there are times where people can be smiling and you just know, oh, that's a snake. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, they can be just as nice. Uh, but, 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 but like Michael Jackson said, it's a smooth criminal. You just, I mean, I mean you just, you just, I mean, you, you, I mean, they smooth, they sweet, but you just, oh, no. No, 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 no. And so... <laughs> I know what the saint's saying. Pastor said, Michael Jackson, keep listening. Come on, stay focused. <laughs> and so those, these, when he manifests in these, he's, he's revealing something to us. Oh, don't we need that? Because boy, in the natural, we are just as blind in the mind as we can be. And a lot of these times when people just think, you know, man, I'm good at discerning people. Oh, no, you ain't. The Holy Spirit is good at, at helping you discern people. <laughs> because people will say that, oh, my discernment is good. And then you look at who they with and they're like, no, because you, you should have known. <laughs> His sermon ain't that good. <laughs> but, 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 but no, you don't ever want to get to the point where you think you good at discerning anything. Now, don't get me wrong. If you walk in the fruits of the Spirit, you can judge a tree. That's what the Bible says. You can judge the fruits of people. You don't need discernment. You just know the fruits and the behavior of people that you don't, you don't have no business with them. Oh, you, you're right. You're a fruit inspector. I like that. You can just inspect the fruit and just see that it's bitter or it's, it's right, you know. But we need, we need for spiritual activity. You need to know when the devil is loose in doing something, and it's a sense that the enemy is all in my day. He's moving against me. He's working against me. You can sense spiritual activity in the presence of the demonic, and I don't care how saved you get, it ain't going to stop the devil from coming around. Oh, he, <laughs> he coming, <laughs> and he coming all the time. And you can literally almost sense by the help of the Holy Spirit his presence. You can't do that in the natural. And all the times you felt like you did it, you didn't do it. You were under a manifestation of the Spirit of God. Say, thank God for the Holy Ghost. See, you're you going to get so good at giving the Holy Ghost the credit for all this that you're going to quit saying, I, 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 anyway. You're going to be the Holy Spirit showed me. He led me. The Spirit of God led me. The Spirit of the Lord. Because that's the only way you can discern something spiritual is by the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. Now, the Bible does declare you can get yourself to a point of spiritual development that you can know good and evil because you know good and evil. You know right and wrong. You can, you can judge it. But man, when he gets into that realm of the demonic, you got to have the gifts of the Spirit. Everybody say, Holy Spirit, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so that's the revelation. These are the revelation uh, manifestations. When he manifests, he's still revealing things to your mind. Now, this discernment of Spirit, sometimes he can show it to you where you can see into that realm. But I think back, back um, when I used to hear the old school teach this, they taught it in a way that discernment of spirits was just seen into a spiritual dimension. And, and, I, and that's not wrong. But that's, you limit it. It's severely limited because sometimes you're not going to see anything to discern it. And I think sometimes they can get people into trying, you know, they can get a little spooky if you think that that's the only, and I saw the angels. I don't have to see them to sense them. You understand? To discern that angels are, are present. 
or discern the Holy Spirit, you know, is moving in a service. When people say that all the time, but they ain't ever seen him. I ain't seen him in all these years. Not that were registered in my physical eyes, but oh, I knew he was moving. I knew he was in the room. Why? I discerned him. I sensed him. Why? Because he was telling me. <laughs> I mean, he's the one giving you the sense. I want you to know I'm moving. I want, you, I, I want you to know I'm up to something. He's the one that's giving you the sense or the discernment. Hallelujah. And so I want the, the Holy Spirit is making these things very practical for us so that we can get these things and not miss him when he's manifesting. Go on down to the third one. I think Sunday we'll just go down through some of these. We'll, we'll just walk with Jesus Sunday with these gifts. So make sure you're watching me and make sure you come and get in, get in, get in. Because we're just going to see these, just walk down through some of these miracles and just follow Jesus and see that he did what he did by the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. That's good news because that means the works that he did. I can do them. I can do them. Why? Why? Because I got the Holy Ghost. And he wants to do it. We just got to get as free as Jesus. Hallelujah. So now, this last one is demonstration. So you got verbalization, you've got revelation, and you got demonstration. When he manifests in verbalization and prophecy and inspiring you to say something or he's saying something to you, when he's functioning in word of wisdom, word of knowledge, he's either showing you something or showing you something about somebody. But man, when you get into the, these, this manifestation, he, he, ready to, he ready to do something. Oh, say Holy Ghost, do something. Which means he's fixing to come out in the open here. And he's fixing, he's fixing to manifest where you can physically see what he's doing. Hallelujah. Gifts of healing. I love it that that gifts is plural because there are many ways he manifests healing. I mean, you just know that when we walk through some of it, that he didn't hardly heal anybody the same way in the Bible. It just varied from person to person, but they were all healed. So the way he manifests, the way he heals is different. But, when he manifests in these gifts of healings, healing will happen. It will happen. And now this is also supernatural healing of the soul. See, it, it is not just healing of bodies. We know that by the demoni demoniac Gadara. We know that by the lunatic son. We know plenty of people that he healed. He healed them by casting the devil out of them. And they were in their right mind. Many that were oppressed just lifted the oppression. Why? Because a lot of it was spiritual. And so there, this any healing, any inner healing, out of healing, body, soul, whatever need healing, he says, I can manifest myself to deal with it. And he can heal and deliver by a word of knowledge that works in, in concert with the gifts of healings. I mean, we just talked about a few minutes ago about the woman at the well. That's what happened to her. You can't, you can't be dealing with that many men and not being bondage. She was in shame. That's the only reason she was drawing water at 12 noon. Nobody came out drawing water at 12 noon they did it early in the morning or late in the evening nobody came she was hoping wasn't nobody there be there and you know by her situation it was full of shame you know and that's why he had to engage her in the conversation but he even did that by a word of wisdom because he said i need to go through samaria 
I mean, I'm just showing you how these gifts were working. He, deceived, he said, God gave him a word. The Holy Spirit told him, you need to go through. I must need go through. I got, I got to go through Samaria today. I got, I got to go through there for some reason. I got to go there. And when he went through there and followed the manifestation of the Spirit, there he saw a woman at the well. Hide. Shame. And he said, give me something to drink. She said, how is it that you're even talking to me? There's a racial issue between, you know, Samaritans and Jews, and then I'm a woman, and, and what, what, what are you doing? <laughs> what you doing, man? And he says, give, give, me, give me something to drink. That, just look how these gifts are manifest, because I don't want you to think well, Jesus knew all of that. How did he know? Manifestations of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is doing this. Whew. The Holy Spirit is doing this. Ah! Mm. The Holy Spirit is doing this. And I'm just thinking about all the times I was led to do something, and I missed a woman sitting at the well. Meaning he don't ever lead you to do something that he ain't trying to bless somebody. And, did. And, I, and I felt led to do it, but I didn't follow through on the rest of it. I probably missed who he sent me to the store to bump into. We're missing it. It's not that he's not manifesting. We're not discerning it. We're not perceiving it. Because I, I guess we're looking for, stop right here. She's over to the right. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, we're missing the supernatural looking for the spectacular. Hallelujah. That's me messing up the mic because I got it too tight to my back. So now, um, so now he, he tells her, he says, give me something to drink. And, um, and um, he engages her in the conversation. Then he goes on up and, um, and says, go call your husband. He gets down, down to the crux of the matter. You, you understand? And then he tells her her past. You've had five husbands and now you're dealing with you know, a situation that you're not in covenant with. And all of that emotional bondage just broke off her until she ran into the city and started saying, come see a man. No shame, ain't hide, ain't running. He delivered her emotionally. All whatever issues, whatever shame, whatever guilt. Oh, are y'all listening to me? I'm talking to somebody. Just one word from God. One, one word of knowledge to let God knows, to let you know God knows where you're at. And he sees you. Is enough sometimes to set people free. That's why most in general, when you give them a word of knowledge, the first thing they start doing is crying. Because to let them know that the Lord knows where they're at. He's touched with a feeling of their infirmity. Man, it'll bring deliverance to the captives. And so the, the, the gifts of healings, whether it's, it's emotional, whether it's psychological, mental, whether there's a demonic spirit at work, or it's physical healing in the actual body. The Holy Spirit is the one that releases that power. Good God of mine. He says, if I can just get somebody to give me a hand, I'll flow through it. Lay your hands on. And I'll release the healing. Or Roberts used to say, he put the healing power in my hand. Wow. Laid hands on so many people that he had to have shoulder surgery umpteen times. Said he had laid hands over, over a million people. Believing that when he put that point of contact, when his hand hit their head, that was their time to release faith in the power. Hallelujah. 
And when you pull on that healing power, the Holy Ghost say, here I come. Here I come, I will release it. Good Lord. Boy, we learning some stuff tonight. Okay, got to close. Got three minutes. And so the, the gifts of heat, working of miracles, this is all kind. This is how Peter walked on water. It's working of miracles. It is the miraculous power of God. Mir- a miracle is an overruling of natural law. That's all a miracle is. Power that supersedes natural law. Nothing that is natural can stop it from overriding it. If the Holy Spirit wanted to right now, he could pick this podium up and move it outside. <laughs> ain't, no, ain't, nothing, ain't nothing matter couldn't do about it, but just move. <laughs> ain't nothing gravity can do about it, except just move. Hallelujah. That's how he walked on water. It was through the power of the Spirit. And told Peter, say, come. Holy Ghost will hold you up. <laughs> and he stepped out, and he was walking on it. But then he began to doubt. He began to d- disconnect from the power. Whew. That's what doubt does. It disconnects us from the power. Why? Because the miraculous overrides the natural. Doubt makes the natural override the miraculous. Boy, I just said something. I said something. Don't, don't even know what I said. What did I say? I want to repeat that. <laughs> I, I'm serious. What did I just say? Yeah, faith is when you believe the, the miraculous will override the natural. Doubt is when you believe the natural will override the miraculous. Doubt is when you magnify the physical over the spiritual. It's when, you, it's when what you know, what you feel, what you've heard, what you've learned, what is in the natural, you believe it more than the ability of the Spirit of God. Good God Almighty. That's why he said don't doubt. He said because if you start doubting, you're going to flip your power source. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> he says because when you start doubting, that means you are magnifying the natural. In saying it has more power and authenticity to you than the power of the Spirit of God. Oh, my God. Woo! Hallelujah. Oh, have faith in God. Come on, say, I believe God. <laughs> yeah, I got faith. I got faith. I got faith. And, and, and faith. It's the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. In order for me to function in faith, that's the only way I can function in the supernatural dimension. If I come out of faith, I'm coming right into the natural. And if I begin to believe the natural over the supernatural then it will begin in my mind, my emotions, and my, even the things I say and do, it will begin to override the supernatural power of God. And that's why you can tell people, you healed, you healed, you healed, but to them, they can't see it. Why? The natural is talking too loud. They believe the doctor said they don't have but three hours. Oh, my God. Mm, mm, mm. And that's why you cut it off. It's not that the Holy Spirit cut it off. You cut off from the Holy Spirit. Good God. Gift of faith. Gift of faith is the Holy Spirit. Close your Bibles. It'll help me. (laughs) Just shut everything down. (laughs) Oh, hallelujah. I really was going to be done two minutes ago, but then he invaded my mind. <laughs> this, this, though, that revelation there, we're going to have to chew on it. 
that was prophetic. See, that came by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The gift of faith is the Holy Spirit imparting faith to you. That's not how faith comes. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. That's a whole other thing for you to develop faith in something and then have the Holy Spirit just, just manifest his faith in your spirit. When that happens, you can't doubt. This is not you coming up with faith. This is not, no, this is his faith invading your spirit. You can't doubt. You, you, get <laughs> you speak to the mountain, it's got to move. I mean, I mean, you, 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 it, that, that's the a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. That ain't normal faith you come up with by feeding on the Word and learning the Word. No, this is. This is when God says, I'm going to override the whole system and I'm just going to impart into you my, my confidence. Lift your hands. Ah, see, the prophetic word just came to me. The Spirit of the Lord is saying, the way I feel right now says the Spirit of grace is the same way I felt when I declared I had so much joy when I revealed the kingdom of heaven to men. When I said in my word that I rejoiced that these things were known to man. The mysteries of the kingdom. I am rejoicing over you tonight the same way For it is my good pleasure to show you the things of the kingdom. Oh, my children, my children. Grasp the things that you have seen and heard tonight. For I indeed have spoken unto you that seeing you may see. And hearing you may hear. You will notice as you leave tonight that you and I have tightened a fellowship in the Spirit. Now don't push me aside. Let me come even closer to your everyday life, to your everyday moving, to where you really live and move and have your being in me. And now the Holy Spirit would say to you, let me help you. I've been sent to help you. Let me walk with you. Let me talk to you. Let me lead you. Let me guide you. Don't lean to your own understanding. Acknowledge me in all your ways. I'll show you whatever you need to know. I'll tell you things to come. I've got your future. And the Father sent me to show you the steps that he's ordered for you. So let me guide. And let me abide. And I will show you. I will tell you. And I will demonstrate to you and through you. That the world might magnify Jesus. That is what I've been called and sent into the earth to do to a 
and for you, says the Holy Ghost. Oh, thank you. I just feel right now, and he didn't ask for this during that prophecy, but I just feel like we need to just, just apologize to him a little bit and to just tell him we're sorry for the times we've ignored him, for the times we didn't trust him, for the times... Where we, we wasn't even close enough to him to even know it, to even know to it, where it just went right on past us, just shot right by us, and we didn't even know he was talking. The times we overrode him, the times we were too embarrassed, the times that we were worried about what people would think or say, the times that we were fearful, the times where we were too self aware and self-consumed to to risk embarrassment or 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 what what happens if 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 I if I miss it it what what happens all oh, tonight holy spirit as you have drawn close to us tonight tonight we let you all the way in and we're so sorry we've rejected our help many times and we are so sorry. We're so sorry. We didn't know it hurt you. We didn't know it grieved you. But thank you for telling us tonight. And we will let you help us. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Glory, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, y'all. Ooh, I know it's time to go, but just a moment, y'all. Oh, glory. I felt that in my spirit, and I was like, what are you doing? He said, I'm feeling you again. Let's go, Shata. I'm feeling you again. I'm, the Bible say, keep being filled. Keep, keep being filled. Right now, he's filling us, y'all. Feel, that's what you're feeling in your stomach. That's what, you, that's, that's what you're feeling down there fluttering in you. That's the sensitivity you feel. It's because he's filling us again tonight. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, 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 glory. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, ah. Helam, oh, oh, ya baha, ya, ya. Ah, ya boho, siandada. Oh, thank you, Lord. Woo. Haya da ba kasiti. Oh, ne ba haya da da da. So, oh, oh. Oh, see, Baba, running over, running over, running. Oh, fill our spirits up, fill, fill our spirits up. Oh, Nyalaba Santo Baba, Shanda, He's equipping you. He's, 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 He's imparting things that are going to be coming out in days to come, in days to come, in situations to come, in situations to come. Whoa, glory. Glory, 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 glory. Whoa. Hadiaha. 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 Oh, ho, ho. Ho, she. Ho, she. Modabaha. Ho, diaha. Sia. Ho, diaha. Ho, diaha. Ho, diaha. Ho, diaha. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh God. Oh shanda bako sanda baka. Sonda baba baba. Konda baha santa. She baba baba baba. Oh. Oh da baha sikita baka. Sonde de da baka santa. Oh, Sadabaka Sata. Oh, 